Kami adalah keluarga besar gereja yang berdedikasi untuk melakukan perintisan gereja, menjangkau generasi berikutnya di kampus, dan memberitakan Injil ke setiap bangsa. Mari bersama-sama kita memuliakan Allah serta menjangkau banyak bangsa dan kampus. Karena itu, pergilah, jadikanlah semua bangsa muridku dan baptislah mereka dalam nama Bapa dan Anak dan Roh Kudus. Selamat pagi, selamat hari Minggu. Uh, good morning, happy Sunday, every nation Jakarta Church. Let's glorify the Lord. Happy to see you all this morning in our service. So welcome for those of you is your first time join our service. My name is Maruli Silalahi, one of the volunteers in Every Nation Jakarta Church. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our service, there are two announcements. The first one is Victory Weekend. For those of you who have done one to one, we encourage you to attend this class. Will be held on Saturdays and Sundays, 4, 10, 11 September, 2022, via online in Indonesian. Information and registration can be done through website Every Nation Jakarta or contact the WhatsApp number on the slides. Number two, Family Ministry webinar, Marital Myths and Telling Truth at the topic, which will be held on 17 September at 3 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, we will hear about marital myth in the marriage life and also the truth behind it. Now, this webinar will be very good for those of you who want to build a family, a strong family in Christ. Registration can be done through the website Every Nation Jakarta. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, let's continue our service by glorifying the Lord through our offering and our tithing. Our offering can be given through online, through the account here and the QR that's on the slides. The Word of God in Philippians 4.19 said, And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. In King James Version, it's clearer state that my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, when I meditate on this verse, it says, it's more personal. It's my God, not just God as all general, but my God shall supply all of your needs. What amazing is according to His riches in glory. So God's riches, God's glory, not according to economic, not according to politics, not according to government, not according to your work, your professional, your job. So it doesn't depend on what we have right now. Whether we are professionals, business, it doesn't depend on that. But my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches glory in Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus. So I'm being strengthened through this word. No matter what we need today, God has provided. God's riches is unlimited. Amen? God's provisions, His riches unlimited. Right? Very unlimited. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for that we can hear your word of God. The word of God says in Philippians 4.19, My God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We believe, God, you supply whatever we need, whatever that become our needs, God. Thank you, God. We are ready to give. We are ready to give with give thanksgiving heart that our offering Our giving can be using for advancing your kingdom. Thank you, God, that all our giving can be used for glorifying your name, Father. In the name of Jesus, we are ready to give. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, of your faithfulness giving. So today, let's praise and worship the Lord. Let's stand up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In Psalm 150, Verse six: Let let every breath, every living who has breath, worship, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sama-sama. Laut bergelora, gunung pun bersorak. Segala ciptaan bangkit memuji dia. Perbuatannya besar, agung dan mulia. Tuhan telah datang dan beri keselamatan seluruh suku bangsa.
Berikan sorak serai yang terbaik buat Tuhan Haleluya Terima kasih Tuhan Thank you Lord, thank you Jesus Haleluya We worship you Lord this morning You are the word at the beginning Come on sing John
You are holy, God. You are amazing. You are God who works in our lives. God reminds me this morning, Psalm 23. Maybe this verse is very familiar for all of us. But God is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. Verse 4, for all of us this morning, God reminds us, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the psalmist didn't say he, but the psalmist said, I will fear no evil for, he didn't say he was with me. The psalmist says, you are with me. It means when we are in the shadow of death, the psalmist says, but God is so close with me. God is here beside me. You're not far from me, Lord. He who is far away, but you are close to me. This morning, God reminds us, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the word of God reminds us this morning, we can say, you are with me. You are together with me. And this morning, God wants to say, will tell every one of us whatever shadow of death that we are having, which is dangers, sickness, diseases, or whether it's your financial, whatever that is that we are facing right now, God is telling us, every of us, I am with you. I will comfort you. I prepare a table before you. I anoint your head that you will surely full of goodness and mercy all the days of your life, that says the Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, for your words this morning, God, that you are not far, that you are with us, especially when we are facing the shadow of death in our lives, God. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Keep speaking to us, keep reminding us for your presence in our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. And all believers say, Amen. Give a best shout for our Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Please be seated, ladies and gentlemen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Thank you, worship team. Amen. You're being blessed. Today, when I read, read Psalm 23, it seems like very common. But God says, no, no, no. When we go through the valley of the shadow of death, He will show us that He is so close with us. He's not far away. But he is together with us. Amen? First of all, I'd like to welcome, for those of you, welcome to our service uh, together with our Every Nation Kuningan, for you on-site, also online. Welcome to all of you. It's really a joyful that we can praise and worship God together this morning. Amen. And before I continue our uh, sermon, closing of the series to be that we've been hearing for this past four weeks, so this is the closing today, i like to update, okay? So there's testimony from... Uh, last week, if you haven't heard the uh, online to YouTube, um, Pastor Yesi testimony, how he testified he had faith that God's opened doors for him. So last Tuesday, Sharon, that he was in the test and and her name in front of her name, they have a title, DRG Dentist. Okay, not yet, not yet. But but, but after this, done can be done. So but God answers our prayer. Amen. So this is the pictures. It means that God is working through what we are facing, we are dealing with through our prayer. So I believe prayer of you all, ladies and gentlemen, who hear this testimony last week, we can see how God's working. Amen. So I'll continue. So today, the series of the Word of God talk about created to be. If last a uh, couple of weeks ago, we heard about we are created to believe. We are created to become Jesus' disciples. We are created to become a part of the spiritual family. And also as a 
spiritual biological family you know husband and wife in a family but also we a spiritual family a part of or belonging to uh, we also created to be like that too spiritual family so we don't praise God we don't have to live our spiritual journey Christianity alone you know like in the movies there there'll be no Christian Lone Ranger we all are walking our journey Christianity Christian journey in us with spiritual family I'm do thank for that so we continue with this morning the conclusion of what we hear and also challenge us to see the truth of God's word and to apply it in our daily lives I'll read from Genesis 1 verse 26 till 28 then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over all every creeping things that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Let's pray. Father, we pray that your words speak to us how we can live in your image and likeness as you have created us to be. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So the today topics, today's sermons, kingdoms, image bearer. When God created us in Genesis, it says that according to his image and his likeness image of god so ladies and gentlemen you everyone of us male and female we are created in god's image so we have this uh bearing in us according to uh, god's image and uh, likeness so we are the image bearer of god's kingdom so we what so what does it mean then we need to understand the context in the book of genesis to understand further how the image of God, the God's image and likeness of God in our lives today, how relevant it is. Maybe we thought, oh, maybe image of God, we are created in the six day six. It's amazing, the most amazing creation. And you know, heaven and earth right now is so beautiful. It is is man is the greatest the, the greatest creation, and the progress of the knowledge and and everything. But today we will hear what is the image of God in the God's likeness at that time, and for us this morning today, so we can get the application, the relevant application for us. Now, I like us to together understand that when we read the Bible, especially in the book of Genesis, usually and so often I do it also. Before that, which I realized I, I look at the wrong perspective. I try to understand the book of Genesis, especially the creation from the concept of thinking scientifically concept knowledge oh it's created light and then the next days there will be a uh, atmosphere and then i start to see there's a tetrosphere and etc now uh, let's see that do you think the first audience of the genesis do they think like us uh, definitely no the answer is no this is what i was wrong and i like to encourage all of us to again see their context at the time. So Genesis 1, verse 3 to 5. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. So the, the wrong method 
Oh, okay. The terms light. So light is a electromagnetic wave. That is the combination of electromagnetic or what field or a magnet field and ma electricity that is twisted and, and, and that creates uh, light with this kind of speed and that speed and when this verse speak about light separated from darkness so it's like this brothers and sisters you know right it seems like weird isn't it because we start to think that that creation it seems like a scientific right have you ever like that or is it only me so often that concept of thinking about science we try to apply it in the bible in the book of genesis the first audience at the time did not think like that the light is a electromagnetic wave or and so and so and so and this heaven and earth this universe have the atmosphere look like a stratosphere no one actually know they don't have that concept of thinking so when we read the book of genesis and we see with the concept of thinking like that and, and we try to, to apply it to the scientific is this that's we may, we lost the main thing of this and this is what i want to encourage all of us to together we'll see that in the account of creation, God is revealing Himself to us. Who is He? He is not trying to fix things, the, our knowledge about the heaven and earth, about the universe. You can get this, right? So if we see that in the account of creation, God is revealing Himself to us, not the science of the creation. So it's not about the science of how these things was created, but he is revealing who he is to us. That's the most important part. I hope we can get this point that we know I'm not trying to do scientific claim here because in the book of Genesis, there's no scientific claim, all right? There's no such thing in Genesis book. It's only about who God is. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The process, if, if you read uh, generally, the first thing God says, in the beginning, God said, God, in the beginning, God created, God said, and then it happened. And says, God says, He saw. After God said, God saw that the light, and He said, it is all good, was good. And then God named, God called, God named. Okay, the process is like that. For the audience, the first audience at that time, what the word of God says, they realized that is an action that's been done by a king or a god, gods of the ancient times, that he is giving a things, purpose, functions to the parts in his kingdom. You know, like our, if I imagine I, I, I built house, oh, this would be a room for me, and then this is the room for my children here, and this is my office. So in many things, God here in the book of Genesis give us uh, pictures that this is the process of a king put orders in his kingdom. So for people at that time, the universe or the it's more like a kingdom more rather than a machine. So we look now look at Earth like a machine. You, we learn science, our parts, our body parts like a mechanism, blood pressure, the organs function. It's like a mechanism of machine that's working in our body. But for them, they see that this universe from the point from their point of view, God is showing that He is King that revealing to each of us, He is giving the functions, the roles, purpose to the parts of His kingdom. Can you get this? So God is giving functions, 
roles and orders. So not merely just material existence, you know, this is for food, this is for things, for that. So it's like a king who gives orders and functions and roles in his kingdom. Can you get this? So you can see that the audience at the time they saw this that the creation is a king, like, like a king who gives order to the parts of his kingdom. So we'll continue with this. The Genesis 1 verse 26, what interesting is when God created, he said this, let us make men in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. So when they were, were created, God immediately said, not so that they have work, I have a lot of works, it's not finished, so I have women, I have men to do it for me, continue it. No, no. But God says, for, for that they have dominion. And ver next verse, and said, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. Subdue and have dominion. So on the first day, God created us, His heart, He's telling us that we are in his image and in his likeness that men are having dominion. They will subdue. If we stop there, we will miss the point of this creation because the finish is not on the day six. We need to understand the continue after that in the next verse. Verse 31, it says like this, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. That is the last verse of Genesis 1. And Genesis 2, verse 1, says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all of the hosts of them. On the first, and on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. Verse 3, that so God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. It says that in the day six, done, man's created, have dominion, but on day seven, God rested. Of course, you thought, like me, me, I, I, my thought, why God need rest? Maybe he said, oh, okay, I'm thirsty, I'll keep talking, do this, do that, let's drink lemonade first. I want to drink first. I'm very thirsty. I just want to get rest a little bit. <sighs> okay, okay, continue on. No, no, right? Did you, did, you don't get in God like that. So, if you, in our context today, if you think that God stopped and resting, if you're resting, where do you do resting? Maybe you're in the luxury place, on your bed, right? The Genesis did not exactly saying how it is it resting, but along the Old Testament, it kept revealing, getting clear, getting clear, getting clear. The rest words here for their context at that time, they know yes, it means stop doing the things that have been doing has been, but it's not just that. So for them, a king. A ruler stop and resting when what? When the orders, the orders is done. Okay. So last week, Pastor Yaya shared about the Lego that's been created by Joel. I thought it's very cool. I want to show mine as well. This is mine. <laughs> okay. It is very uh, messed up. It's co projects a couple of years ago. It's here, but it's not in order. But in the Lego that uh, Joel made, it became a guitar. There's a function. There's a picture. Oh, this is guitar. You don't believe this is guitar or this is an airplane, right? You don't believe it because there's not in order, right? So when the orders set, God make everything in orders. There's a purpose, there's the roles, there's function. Maybe Joel at that time just like us. 
Wow. Wow. Done. That's it. All set. Or is it me only? Well, this is a king rest when the orders are set. Number two. The king rest the characterized by ongoing control and stability. Not just done, then messed up, and then repeat it again. No, he is done and he's rest. For the audience at that time, where's the king having rest? He takes rest for the audience sat at the time. The king rests on his throne. He's resting. He inhabit. He in dwelling on his throne, in his throne. So the concept is on the day seven, God on the throne. He's reigning on earth. He rests on earth as his dwelling place. You can, you can get the picture. Can you get the picture? So in the book of Exodus, if you thought Exodus is the exile of the Israel, you need to read it again. Why? Because not just about the exile, but it's only a couple of chapters in the beginning. But the rest of the chapters is about how to build the tabernacle. It talks about how God wants to come, God wants to dwell, He wants to inhabit, because God's presence is designed to be in the midst of us. Psalm 132 pictures this. For the Lord has chosen Zion, He has desired to for His dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. In English, for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for His dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. For the Indians at that time, the king, God who created the heavens and earth, will dwell in the midst of us. He reigns on this earth. Can you get that? So for the audience at that time, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords is coming, dwell and inhabit, rule and reign. I'll quote what John Walton said in the Old Testament uh, scholars. The most central truth to the creation account is that this world is the place for God's presence. Wow. That the most central truth for us to understand that this world is actually a place where God's want to be here and dwell, inhabit with all of us. It says, I will pour it out. So that your children, your, your son and daughters, does mean God wants to be in the midst of us. That's the essential in the Genesis 1 that He rules, He reigns as a king. And I want to say that God dwells, God wants to dwell in the midst of us as a king who reign and rule through us, His image bearer. So on the day 6, finished, maybe, I'm just imagining, this is my imagination, I thought day 6, God is created, the day 7, God sees, God's resting. But no, but for me, I see is that on day 7, human see God reigns. And human know this is how God reigns, this is how God rules. And I believe God's calling for us when we, He is in the midst of us, He will reign, He will rule on this earth through us, the image bearer, His image bearer. Can you get this? So when so we are created, have His image and His likeness, so that we become this representative. And the Corinthians says we are the ambassador of Christ. That's God's presence in us. In Genesis, in the book of Genesis, it doesn't show that to us because we fell into sin, rebellion. We men try to rule with our own way. 
with our own ideas, with our desires, our own. But God wants us to reign with His ways, with His ideas, with all that He has given us, as including our talents, the way we think, ability to think, creativity, everything. God given to us so that we reign together with Him in His relationship. Together with him, look for verse eighteen. When Jesus come on earth, this is the verse that he read, and he said, "And this happened when you read this it was when we was uh, uh, read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, and he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor." Spirit of God, God's presence, the real in Jesus Christ, and it says He has anointed. Only King can be anointed. The Messiah here. So Jesus come, I come as a King, and this message is keep repeated. And the Pharisee asked Jesus, verse Luke seventeen says like this: The kingdom of God is not coming in ways that can be observed. Nor will they say, "Look, here it is," or "There." For behold, not like that. The kingdom of God is in the midst of you. Jesus said, Jesus told them, "You're looking around. You're looking kingdom of God." But Jesus said, "For the kingdom of God is in the midst of you." When Jesus was there, and in the version of the real language, it can be translated: "The kingdom of God is in within you. Is within you, and and kingdom of God is within your grasp. It's not far from you, and that is the truth about the God's image and likeness in our lives. That God is God that want to dwell." In the midst of us, and that can only happen because Christ has died for us. Because we believe what He had done for us. Now, we have access to get in, to be in the presence of God. The lost in the Genesis is not only just lost of God's glory, but they lost the access to God's presence. But we, right now, today, as a believer. In Christ Jesus, we have access into God's presence every day in our lives, and that's the meaning, the image bearer for us that we bring, we bearing the responsibility. Responsibility is that we are created as God's image and likeness, and we bring God's kingdom. In our life, wherever we go, the application for us today, with the fact that God's presence in together with us, we cannot think that something that is later on, later on, later in eternal, in eternity, because right now the kingdom of God is already inside of us, in every of us. The Holy Spirit is in each of us. A lot of Christianity, Christian people think that we believe in the Lord. Yes, when we die, we go to heaven, right? We want to get to going fast, going to heaven. No, everyone wants to go to heaven, but later on, but we want to get into heaven. So the news is about going to heaven, but I would say no. What? The important eternity, but and right now what we're facing, the Christian doesn't believe by doing creativity that God has given, so that we can build or use whatever talents that God has given us, creativity, intellectual for what to build God's kingdom on this earth. So every temporal things or eternal things, both of them we cannot separate them anymore. We have to live both of them. That is the fact. When there's a get God, if God's kingdom is in us, number two, that before that, I will read John seventeen verse three, and this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. So that eternally. It's not later, but now, in the knowing of Jesus Christ, every day in our lives, everything that you have right now, 
it seems like temporal, but that's also important before God's eyes. Amen. Number two, this fact, this truth, make us out the concept thinking that live in a natural or supernatural. A lot of people think that oh, I need miracles. Oh, I need miracles for healing. Yes, miracles is supernatural. For those people out there, is supernatural. But for us who walk together with God. Supernatural is something natural for us. So natural and supernatural cannot. It's hard to be separated. I remember one person talked to me. How can you be like this? It's just like you make right decision like that. How can you? Well, when I was praying, God led me. God led me to make decision, and then that the most. That's amazing. That's the best decision ever. Have you ever experienced like that? There's a time when in the life you feel like one of this, one of that, and God leads you the other thing. And after you walk out, you give thanks. Wow, that's supernatural. Because all knowledge of this world is not enough to make decision to get. It seems like brilliant like that. Why? Because God leads you, leads us. So life supernatural and natural for us, for believers, because God's kingdom is in us. That is common. That is natural for us. What we experience in the workplace, not just natural, but also supernatural. So God reminds us for maybe some of you going to workplace. Oh God, hard to meet this person. It's very a hard, tough person. Anyone feel like that? I met a person, a businessman told me, man, the technical is easy, everything is easy, but the non-technical is very hard. <laughs> It seems like I need to pray for. That's why, yeah, that's why you need God. Why? Because what the non-technical is only God can deal with it. And I believe. God works a lot of things in our lives, in your life, like that. Why? Because God's kingdom, God is in in the midst of us. It's not far away. Amen. And next one, Roman eight verse eleven. If the spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. It means our journey, our life journey, we walk through with Holy Spirit. There are many things that we will decide, we thought, we think of it, we will make decisions, and I believe the Holy Spirit will lead every of us. Amen. And the last one. This truth also make us out from the concept thinking sacred or secular, sacred, holy, and secular. I was chatting with a Christian person. I want a ministry on Saturday, Sundays. I have to sacred myself. I have to sanctify myself. It's very important. I said, "Yeah, it's good. Praise God." But from Monday to Friday, this also sacred. You have to sac- sanctify yourself as well because your God's kingdom is in you. So I want to tell this person that when you work, going to workplace, you meet people in the office, you lead a meeting, you make presentation. That that's nothing lower the the sacredness. Then you on the stage and preach. Why? Because God's kingdom, the God's kingdom is the same. And and this morning on to say, when we walk to office, you know, meet clients. Maybe some of you meet vendors, and some of you have to deal with the employees. Have to deal with your. Uh, uh, boss, maybe that someone's good, someone's not good. Maybe it's, ah,、oh, it's so hard. This conflict is not done. That's the time when you see your work is sacred. Your work is sacred before the Lord, because when we go out there to a place where we, to a place where we work. We bring God's kingdom in the midst of the world that we live in. That's how God reigns. When God reigns on this earth, when God created this world according to His order, He didn't give tank or military and etc. In Matthew, blessed are those who are poor, because they will inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who are meek, because they. 
half the earth. Because when God went to show that He reigns, He sends people who are weak, who are meek, who have a heart that holy, who have gone to the mountains, those who have a holy heart. He made this world change when He brings people that's been redeemed, that has God's presence in the midst of the world. And I want to tell to all of you, 1 Corinthians 3, that it's very important for us to understand, do you not know that you are God's temple and the God's Spirit dwells in you? When we go to workplace, when we meet people, even when we interact with one another, when we are in the family, in our spiritual family, the world see how can you have that kind of relationship? How can they love one another? Why? Why? Because God's kingdom is close. Because God's kingdom is in the midst of us. Amen? Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. It means the materials of God's kingdom, when we keep proclaiming the gospel, we live it out, we, we also declare it, we also proclaim it. They need to listen, they need to hear that our life become a news that God's presence in the midst of the world through our lives. It will change the world, but also this gospel makes the world respond. Look for that I've read earlier in the Spirit, so I will uh, proclaim uh, liberty to the captives, to the oppressed, how, to, how He do it, sending His children. When there's a poor people, they came social justice through the generous people who wants to give. When they're challenged in the unfair, God sent righteous people to be there to make a difference. I will close with this. Jesus was asked by His disciple, God teach us to, how to pray. And, and the, the, the English is the Lord's Prayer, but actually this is the prayer for the disciples, also for us then. Right? It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. No, today, wherever we go, we see in our relationship with God, with Father, the heaven, creator of heaven and earth, He asks us to bring the kingdom of God, the image of God that God has given us to reign together with Him in the relationship together with Him, that His will will be done for us this morning, this today. We will worship the Lord. May we worship God. Uh, allow Holy Spirit to speak to to speak to each of us. Maybe you are in the middle of facing challenge in your workplace, and you said, "I can't do any more, God. I can't do any more." But God reminds, "My presence with you. My presence is with you. The things that you are facing." God reminds, I dwell in you. Okay? Let's stand up. Let's worship the Lord. Allow Holy Spirit to touch us.
God, we give thanks to you, Lord, for what we're facing in our lives, God. When we go to workplace, when we face challenges, when we face problems, when we face conflicts, your presence is with us. Holy, Holy Spirit leads us. Give us wisdom. Give us creativity. Give us our eyes to see things that we unable to see, because your Holy Spirit is with us. There is healing happen. There's restoration happen in our lives, in our families' lives, because your Spirit walk together with us, lives, dwells in us, in our lives. Father, I pray this morning. That your people, God, your words remind us that you created us through your image and your likeness, so that we can go bring God's kingdom to the world. In our relationship with you, we know whatever condition in our workplace, in our family. In a place where we having activities, your kingdom come and your will be done in the midst of our lives. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we receive your words. Raise your hands right now. Receive God's blessings, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let your word, let your bless, your blessings come down to your people, and they walk in your relationship with you, Father, living Father who created heaven and earth, that reigns, that rules, leading your children's life, God, that you will sanctify, that will holyify, glorify your name, make holy your name. Let your kingdom is so real, and your will. Be done in their lives, in that whatever they do, and on this earth, as on heaven. Thank you. Bless your people. Send them to become the image of God that bring good news to the midst, in the midst of the world. In the name of Jesus, all believers say Amen and Amen. Give God a best shout. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Sunday. God bless you.